Today's video is sponsored by Felton Brushes. Felton Brushes Limited has been around since 1933. They are a 100% Canadian owned and operated business manufacturing all of their products in Hamilton, Ontario. Today we use the Chef Felton 704 Premium Grill Brush with a 0.016 inch wire diameter which is over three times as thick as imported barbecue brushes. Felton brushes have been CSA tested and are safe thanks to high quality, locally sourced, oil tempered stainless steel. For more information or to purchase your own, visit www.cheffelton.com. Okay, so we're just going to uh, talk a little bit about what to do when you get this fantastic piece of meat. Uh, we're working with the tomahawk today. Uh, don't be intimidated by the tomahawk. I know it looks huge and I know a lot of people haven't worked with it before but it's a, it's a fantastic piece and uh, you can do a lot with it. Uh, we actually got one today that uh, is not pre-trimmed, which is a great uh, w uh, way for me to show you what to do if you get a, p uh, a piece of meat that's not already trimmed. What we're doing here, we're just getting uh, taking off uh, some of the fat, so there's a really good, nice layer of fat um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the outside of it. You'll notice with the tomahawk, we have the bone in here, so this is the rib bone, okay? Uh, we're gonna we you want to leave that bone in because that bone equals flavor and you really don't want to take that out Okay, that's one of the, the, the great things about the, the tomahawk. We did have a really big layer of fat here uh, We're going to trim some of that off We don't want to trim all that off because there's some really good flavor in there that we want to keep However, we do uh, as you can tell like you, you, you wouldn't want pieces of fat uh, on the outside that looks like this. Sometimes just due to the aging process, it'll just look a little bit drier and not as appealing. So you just want to trim that off. Pretty straightforward. Get a nice sharp knife, uh, which we have a couple different uh, nice sharp knives that we're using today. And then you just want to kind of trim off this outer layer of fat on this side. Some of the world's finest Angus cattle are raised right here in Canada under ideal conditions. The Canadian landscape, water, and fresh air are a big part of what makes them so great. It also takes a select group of hardworking Canadian ranchers to bring those elements together. Canadian Angus Rancher Endorsed is a certification program that offers quality assurances and endorsements for Canadian Angus genetics. With the support of the Canadian Angus Association, Canadian Angus Rancher Endorsed provides confidence for the consumer that all beef raised under the brand will exceed expectations in both quality and sustainability. To learn more about our commitment, visit www.cdnangus.ca. So just a few things with prep, now that we've got this tomahawk nicely trimmed, is uh, you don't just want to throw it right on the grill, okay? Uh, but you also don't need to add a ton of, it's such a great cut of meat that we don't have to add a lot of seasoning. I find with the tomahawk, especially with this rib eye, nice ribeye, the uh, the simpler is better. So what we're using today is we're just going to use a nice kind of uh, flaky sea salt. Okay, so we're going to get that and we're going to get a lot a lot of uh, seasoning on this. Okay, because it's such a big piece. I think one of the big things with uh, at home chefs, family chefs at home is you're you're always worried to over season. But with this you want lots, lots of seasoning on there. Okay, we're going to get it on all sides. So because uh, remember when you're eating this, it's, you're eating, there's, there's about three or four inches of meat you're going through. So it might seem like a lot of seasoning and a lot of salt, but essentially it isn't. We're going to go on all four sides here. Really get it into that meat. We're also going to add some pepper as well. And then we're going to kind of pat it in to make sure it gets all through there, okay? The other thing to remember when you're prepping the meat is you want to take it out of the fridge. Uh, you want to thaw it in the fridge. So if it comes frozen, uh, you want to thaw it in the fridge over a, a day or two. You don't just want to take it out on the counter and thaw it there. And also you want to bring it up to room temperature before you, you cook it, especially if you're going to be grilling it. It just uh, will produce a, a better even uh, um, cooking through that meat. So that's what we're doing now. We've got this out of the fridge uh, now and it's just getting up to room temperature and now we're giving her a good season. Okay. So now we have our salt and pepper on here again. Simple is better when it comes to uh, the tomahawk steak. We're working with such a nice flavorful piece of meat already. We don't have to add a bunch of bells and whistles to it. So we're, all we're adding is a nice uh, coarse salt and pepper. Uh, and then what you want to do is kind of just, if you have gloves, if you don't, it's all good if you're using your bare hands and just kind of rub that, that uh, into 
the steak and into this meat, really get it in there. Okay, and then I like to do this a little bit before I grill it. I don't want to do it right before I grill it because it gives uh, it gives it some time to really get uh, um, kind of absorbed into that meat. Okay, so we got that ready to go, and now we're just going to let it rest uh, to get right up to room temperature, probably another half hour or so, and we'll get her cooking. So one of the questions I think a lot of consumers and a lot of people will be asking there as we see different grades of beef, from a chef's standpoint, how important is the quality of the grade and the quality of the product you start with in the cooking preparation and what difference does it make in the end product that you're going to serve on the plate? Well, the quality of, when you get a quality product, that is uh, essential because you're serving to clients, you're serving to high-end restaurants and you have to make sure that you have a great finished product. With Canadian Angus, what I love about Canadian Angus is uh, you essentially, the chance of getting a uh, poor quality piece of meat is next to nothing. Um, and the, the marbling with Canadian Angus is uh, the cream of the, cr the crop. And what you'll see in here with the meat, what we're using today, is that really nice marbling texture right in that muscle is just going to create some fantastic flavor at the end. I wish you guys could taste this at the end because uh, unfortunately we're on video, you won't be able to taste it. But uh, to me, uh, this is the cream of the crop of the industry. And Canadian Angus, uh, you never get a bad cut with Canadian Angus. Well, today we are going to be presenting the tomahawk steak and there's a number of reasons why we chose the tomahawk steak here as our choice of our first cut of this video series. First of all, the ribeye is by far my favorite, my go-to cut of beef. It's the, the marbling, the tenderness, the juiciness that that brings there. So it was my go-to product there and the ribeye is the key component of the tomahawk steak. The second aspect is just that wow factor. If you're looking at, you know, to be able to present, you know, that make at home meal, that you can get, you can make at home that you traditionally think you can only get in the restaurant. This is probably the product you can go to. It's a product that you can't find in your grocery store. Um, the bone-in tomahawk is just brings that wow factor. So if you've got some family, friends, guests, business associates, you're going to be able to present something that they haven't seen before. The other thing I really like about the tomahawk is that family aspect this brings to it. I really think beef is a family event. Eating beef should be um, done as a family. And the tomahawk, the way we're going to be cooking it today, is going to be shared at a family event um, that you can take it for Thanksgiving, a cr Christmas. Um, really bring that family togetherness. And that's really why we chose the tomahawk here today. I um, want to really thank our sponsor for this product here, the Munn Family Benchmark Angus out of Lethbridge, Ben's Quality Beef. This is 45 days dry aged prime beef. Prime is really less than 2% of all beef will turn prime. So it's a specialty product that really is just reserved for high-end restaurants, a product that you would not find in your local grocery store. So we're really excited about presenting this product here. They are part of our Canadian Angus Ranchers Endorsed Program and our Canadian Angus Ranchers Endorsed Platinum Program. We're going to be able to talk a lot more about that uh, later on and the specs and the quality and how you become um, a member of that and really what that brand stands for. So we look forward to be able to presenting this product. Um, and contact Canadian Angus in the future about how do you access a very special product like this. All right, so now we are ready to get this bad boy on the grill. Uh, we've prepped it, it's ready to roll. Uh, and now one thing I'd recommend is you wanna make sure you get, uh, if you don't have one of these at home already, you wanna get a, uh, a meat thermometer, a nice portable meat thermometer. Not only is it great for a big piece of meat like this, like the tomahawk, but it also can work on anything at home, whether it's chicken, fish, sausage, uh, and it really can help you not undercook or overcook things. So it gives you a bit more confidence as a, as a home chef, okay? So we, got our in, we have our um, InstaRead meat thermometer in there. Uh, the cooking method we're using today is an indirect heat reverse sear. So you can use a smoker at home, you can use a grill. Uh, what we have is we've uh, we have it at about 300 degrees right now. We're actually not putting this directly on the heat, so the, the hot part of the uh, grill, which is on the right side, we're not putting the uh, piece of meat on that. We're putting the tomahawk on the left side, and it's gonna kind of slow, slowly cook. Um, usually takes about 45 to an hour uh, to get it right up to temperature that we want. We're gonna cook it to a nice medium rare today. That's how most people like their, their steaks, and that's how uh, we're gonna be eating it today. And at the end, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let it rest, and then we're gonna give it a nice sear so we can uh, get some great flavor in there, okay? Let's get her going. 
The Canadian Angus Association is a not-for-profit organization that was incorporated in 1906 under the Animal Pedigree Act of Canada. Today, Angus is the largest beef breed in Canada, representing over 50% of all purebred beef cattle registered. This registration system is what allows us to assure you that you are buying Canadian-raised Angus beef. The vision of the association is to preserve and expand the Angus breed for Canadian cattle producers and beef consumers. We understand the importance of sustainability, innovation and quality. Our ranchers are true stewards of their land. They raise cattle humanely not only because they know it's best for the animals and their customers, but also because they know it's best for future generations. That is why we work hard to continually develop scientific tools and technology to increase productivity for our ranchers and an excellent eating experience for consumers. Canadian Angus beef is known around the world for its quality. It's as nutritious as it is delicious. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.cdnangus.ca to see how we create meaningful experiences for our members, our industry, and our customers. So what we're doing today with this tomahawk, one of the main challenges when you are cooking a really thick piece of meat like this is, uh, is over or under cooking it. A lot of people will put it on the grill on high or medium and by the time uh, it's ready on the inside to that temperature you've overcooked the outside and you get uh, a little bit of burn or too much char on that outside. Uh, so what we're using today is the indirect method. So essentially we're cooking at a bit of a lower temperature. Uh, we're cooking it off of that direct heat. Um, it's taking about an hour which I think is, is all good. It's not like you're using a ton of extra propane or gas. And then at the end, when you want to get that nice barbecue flavor and that nice kind of sear and a bit of char on there, that's where we're going to put it on that direct heat and we're going to uh, char it at the end. Our goal is medium rare today. So for 125, that's when you want to pull it. And you can do one of two things. You can rest it uh, for about 10 or 15 minutes and then sear it. Or what we're going to do right now is we're going to, we're going to put, uh, sear it right away. Okay, so we're at 125. We're confident that's at the thickest part of the meat is at 125. So we're confident that it's at the temperature we want it to be. There we go. There's our uh, perfect timing. Okay, so I'll turn that off. And look at that piece. And we're going to sear it. This is that's on a nice high heat. Listen to that nice sizzle. At this point, uh, we can take the uh, thermometer out, but we'll just leave it in. So we got that nice sizzle on there. We'll give her a close about a minute on each side. Okay, so it's been about a minute. We're gonna turn that over now. We got some great uh, char in there. Look, it's looking fantastic. And we'll just let her rip on that side for about a minute. And there you have it. We have a reverse sear indirect heat method to grill in this uh, tomahawk steak. Uh, a lot easier than I'm sure some people might think it is to cook a tomahawk and uh, we're about 15 minutes away from having lunch. So we've got this tomahawk steak off the grill. Uh, fantastic prime cut Canadian Angus beef right here and uh, we are excited. Uh, what we're gonna, what we're doing with it right now is we're letting, you have to let the meat rest so for about 10 or 15 minutes we're letting this rest um, just to make sure that you, that nice uh, juice is getting distributed evenly throughout the, uh, the cut. What we have here, I've made a little chimichurri sauce so uh, it's great in the summer. Essentially just go out to your garden or get from your local grocer some nice fresh herbs, whatever's in season. Uh, we've used the grill method the, uh, uh, today where we've done an indirect uh, cooking reverse sear on the grill. Sounds a little more complicated than it is. It's actually pretty easy to do. And what it does is it kind of guarantees that you don't burn it or overcook it. Uh, so that's what we've done today. But there's so many different ways you can cook this. And that's what I like about it. It's very versatile. If you're into sous vide this is something you can really uh, easily sous vide. Uh, and it goes really well with the sous vide as long as you can sear it at the end. You can do a, a cast iron. So you can use a cast iron on your on your uh, stove top at home and you want to you can either sear it at the start and pan sear it right away on that cast iron and then finish it in the oven at about 300 degrees. So I think beef is uh, imperative to a healthy diet and lifestyle. One of the great things about beef is that it is uh, a great source of protein and it has complete protein. So a lot of times you'll get other sources of protein but protein to be an actual really good clean fuel and for you to really get the best benefits of it 
um, uh, th with your body and, and nutrition wise is you need a complete protein which has 18 essential amino acids beef has that there's not too many types of protein that have that another thing that i love about beef is that it is high in iron and high in zinc and those are two minerals that we uh, we with women especially there uh, can be low in iron it's kind of a common deficiency in women and in men zinc is a common deficiency that we have so this has a is pretty high in both those minerals so it's great for both your your men and women that, that are lacking those nutrients